Welcome back to Tube. I'm Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and here's Google Apps Updates Roundup number 27 and there are some quite exciting features to show you in this episode. One small thing I want to highlight before starting, all my Amazon affiliate links are in the description below. They include all the products I use in filming my videos. So if you are interested in any, please support the channel and give it a shot. So without further ado, let's jump in. I will start with Google Photos and the first change is the new placement of the sharing tab. Now it's located in the bottom navigation bar with a new icon and instead of being placed at the top left corner like before, other than this, it works exactly the same. The second change is under the search tab. If you remember from my last episode, I showed you the new enhanced search filters that you can use to locate exactly what you are looking for. This feature got even more changes. The first one is the new filters button on the left. Previously, it used to be a label called filters and the tapping on it won't do anything. But now when you tap on this filters button, you will get a bigger view for all the filters you have at the top. So by this, you can see all of them at once and instead of scrolling through the carousel, plus it's a more touch friendly approach. From here, you can easily add and remove filters like this. So this is just a different view for what we already have and it doesn't add any extra functionality. On top of this, now you will be able to see these filters in more places. So for example, when you tap on any person under people and pets, you will see the filters at the top. That's exactly the case for all the categories under things. Also, all the categories you see here at the bottom, like screenshots or selfies and so on. But the only place you won't see these filters in is under places. When you go to any place, you will only see the map at the top. One small thing worth mentioning, when you scroll all the way to the left, you will see a more button. Tapping on it will give you the same overlay card with even more options like archive, photo scan, and the motion photos. And these three filters are not included in the carousel. And the third change is the new Google Photos Memories widget. Unfortunately, it's only available on iOS devices for the time being. And this is not the first time we see Google doing this. Sometimes they push features to iOS devices before Android or even their own branded phones. But anyways, let me show you what it's all about. The widget will simply view your memories in a slideshow, which means it will dynamically change over time. And you will be able to see the memory title at the bottom left corner. And when you tap on it, it will take you straight away to the same exact memory you see on your home screen. The widget doesn't have any special settings or controls and as you see here when I tap and hold on it all I can do is to remove it but you will get three different sizes so let me try to show you this. You will see it under Google Photos. You have the small, medium and large. And now it's time for today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by PDF Element by Wondershare. PDF Element makes it super simple to edit your PDFs. You can replace or add your own text highlight text with a bunch of different colors, add images, create your own watermark, and more. But it's not only about editing. You will also be able to create your own password-protected digital signature and sign your document in a matter of seconds. Convert PDFs to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Image, PDF Archive, and more. It can compress large PDFs to smaller size, and with PDF Element version 8, now you can compare two different files to easily spot the differences between them. PDF Element works on Mac, Windows, iOS, iPadOS, and the cloud. You can get up to 50% discount on the standard and the pro plans using the link in the description below, either if you are interested in the Windows, Mac, iOS, or the cloud version. To know more, please check the links in the description below, and now let's get back to the review. Next, Google Messages. And the first change is the ability to pin up to three conversations at the top of your list, Maybe it's not a new feature for some, but I only got it on my phone recently. To do this, tap and hold on the conversation you want, and you will see the pin button over here. Tap on it, and the conversation will always stay on top with the pin icon next to it. To unpin it, do the same exact steps and use the unpin button. The second feature is the ability to change your conversation font size using the pinch to zoom gesture. So as you see here, when I pinch to zoom in, all the text is getting bigger, including what I have in the text field but this doesn't impact the uh, photos and videos you have in your conversation. So as you see here, when I pinch to zoom, nothing changes. It's only for the text. The app will also apply the same font size to all of your conversations. So for example, here is another one and I still have the same bigger font. The third feature is the ability to store your messages to easily get back to them later. So for example, if this message is important to you, tap and hold on it and then use the star button at the top 
Once done, the message will be flagged. But how can you access your restored messages? If you want to access the ones related to this conversation only, tap the three dots at the top right corner and then tap on start. The second way is to access all the start messages from all conversations by going back to your messages list, tap the three dots as well and tap on start. And finally, you can use the search. By tapping the search bar, you will see the start category over here. Not only this, but the app will automatically categorize the type of messages you flagged. Here you have the text category, images, videos, places, and links. The only problem I have with this feature is I'm not able to store multiple messages at once. So for example, when I highlight two messages, the start button will disappear. One more feature in Google Messages, which is my favorite, is the Gmail-like categories. This feature should only be available in India for the time being. However, I got it on my phone by doing certain steps. First, I downloaded an app called VPN India and connected to an Indian VPN using the green switch at the bottom. After 15 minutes, I went back to settings and then chat features and I found the chat features broken and the status is stuck on connecting. So I decided to disconnect from the VPN to get my feature back and after force quitting Google Messages and opened it again, I got this welcome screen explaining to me that the feature is now available on my phone. But I have to tell you, after doing this, I lost the ability to pin conversations as I showed you earlier, but I still have the stored messages feature. So now let me show you how it works. The feature will show you four different categories at the top. The first one is called personal, and this one will only show you the messages you have with people and hide anything else. The second one is called transactions and as you see here in my case I got a message that includes the word transaction and that's why it appears under this category. The third one is called OTPs and as the name suggests you will get all the OTP messages sent to you and finally you have offers. There is one more feature related to OTPs when you go to settings and then message organization. This is a new menu item, by the way. You will see a switch here called auto delete OTPs after 24 hours. When you turn on the switch, the phone will automatically delete all these unused messages and make your inbox clean. You can also revert back to the normal view of messages when you turn off the switch over here, if you don't like these categorized messages. Next, YouTube. And the first change I'm gonna show you is the new timed comments feature. So for example, if someone added a comment on this video with a specific timestamp, let's say 302, once you reach this point in the video, YouTube will automatically show you the comment on the screen. So let me show you how it works to understand more. When you tap to expand the comments section and then tap the filters icon, you will see a new option here called timed and it's in beta. When I tap on timed and then start playing the video, take a look at the comments below they will change automatically based on where I am in the video. It works as if you are in a live chat. You will also see all these white dots on the progress bar means that these are timed comments that will appear once you reach this point. So as you see, as far as I keep progressing, the comments are changing below. And when you start scrolling manually, you will see a floating button here called sync to video time, which will sync the comments back again with the video, but unfortunately it crashes the whole YouTube app. And weirdly enough, this is the only video on YouTube that allowed me to try the feature. So for example, here's a video from my channel that I'm sure it includes timed comments. And when I tap on the comment section, I don't have the option. I tried other videos from big channels, let's say MKBHD, Let's try that. But the feature doesn't exist. So I'm not sure why this video specifically, but I'm gonna leave its link in the description below anyways, if you want to try the feature. The second feature I'm gonna show you is the ability to directly share video chapters. So for example, here is one of my videos. And when I go to chapters and then tap on view all, you will see a share button next to each one. Let's say I want to share this chapter. Tapping the share button will show you the video will start at 4.57 and the name of the chapter is notification shade and the quick settings. Let's say I'm gonna share this link on WhatsApp. As you see here, the link has a timestamp, which means tapping on this link will take you directly to this part of the video. Next, the phone app. And the first change is in the font. Now it's using Google Sans that we first saw in Gboard. The difference between the two is minor, but Google Sans is definitely better. The second change is under settings. Now you will see all the features are listed under three main categories, assistive, 
general and advanced you will also see most of the items are now having their own icons which wasn't the case before and finally you won't find any new functionality here it's all about how it looks last but not least now you can search for the unsaved numbers under your recents tab so for example this is one of the unsaved numbers i have and when i search for it it will appear under a new section called not in your contacts previously this search used to only work with the numbers saved in your contact list which is no longer the case next google chrome and the first change is the new microphone icon that will allow you to dictate your search query or the url now i'm going to talk about some features in google canary that we might get in the stable version later the first one is the new google lens shortcut in the address bar tapping on it will take you straight away to the lens app and you can also find it in chrome homepage over here let me also show you some cool features related to the tab groups the first one is the ability to share all the tabs open in one message and you can do this by tapping the three dots at the top right corner then share group and canary will create a numbered list with all the tabs open which gonna save you a lot of time if you want to share multiple links you can also give a name for your tab groups so for example i'm gonna call this one shopping and by this when i go to the tabs view you will see the group has its own name plus some of the website's fav icons showing next to it you will also find a couple of new options here like remove tabs from group and edit group name tapping on remove tabs from group you will be able to multi-select the tabs you want and then tap on remove now i'm going to show you some visual tweaks that are only available on android 12 starting with the files app it got a redesigned navbar at the bottom as you see here it looks very similar to android 12 material u plus when you switch between tabs you will get this new android 12 animation next google discover and here i have it side by side with android 11 on my pixel 3 xl and as you see here i have the card design while here it's totally flat plus the logo at the top is now shifted towards the left instead of being in the center and finally the article's description is no longer showing you will only get the title and finally google drive got a new animated splash screen so that's pretty much it for today those are all the new changes i spotted in google apps please let me know in the comments if i missed anything and if you like my video please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos thank you for watching